What's good, family? Texas Fan of Rehab here, man. Back with another one, man. And listen, I am so ecstatic. The Texas won against the New Orleans Saints. And I'm telling you, if there's a fan base that I can't, well, I don't want to say I can't stand. I enjoy them, but if there's a fan, if there's a stand, if there is a fan base that I enjoy us winning against more than any other, it's probably the New Orleans Saints. Eh, probably number two to the, the Dallas Cowboys and their ridiculous fans. But let's get right into it, man. I just want to touch on the the, the you know the beautiful victory that we had, man. Um, you know, kind of just give my little thoughts and opinions about what went down and what I saw, man. Listen, great game. We won 20 to 13. Um, I think that I had the prediction something like 21 to 19. I didn't have it going our way. That was really more of a sentiment to just trying to make sure that I could stick to the religious, uh, uh, not religious, but the the, the uh, uh, superstitious aspect of <laughs> picking against us so that we could win. Um, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if it's working or not, whatever. But you know, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try it out. But listen, man, the Texans did the thing, of course. Um, C.J. Stroud. Listen, I'm going to start with him. Didn't have the statistical game that we all would expect, but he was playing against a top-tier defense in the Saints and what they had to bring to the table. Um, had his first interception, man. I mean, these things happen. I mean, it couldn't last forever, right? You know, he made it, I think, 192 passes or uh, pass attempts uh, before he finally got his first pick. Uh, it wasn't a very great I don't know exactly what he saw. I saw the all 22. I, I don't know exactly what he saw, but you know, hey, he got that on out the way. He was clean the rest of the game. And listen, we even had the good luck, that, uh, the good fortune that Nico Collins came back and knocked the ball out, so we got a first down out of it. You know, even when we lose, we win. Man, it's just one of those miraculous things. Too blessed to intercept, man. That's what I call it. But anyway, um, man, it's a good game, man. We put together some solid drives. Um, I, I especially like what we did in the face of uh, trying to stop the uh, New Orleans Saints on defense, man. And we stepped up in crucial times. It was good to see that even with the attacks that they were doing downfield, they were going down the field to uh, uh, Michael Thomas a lot. Uh, they were going down the field. Uh, even, you know, when they were dropping down and, and checking down to uh, Alvin Kamara, you got to see Alvin Kamara do his thing. But there was a heavy heavy pre presence of tackling that was going on, man. Uh, I, I saw a lot of good things out of Will Anderson. It was good to see him uh, show up and, and, and um, you know, corrupt the backfield. Um, a lot of tackles in the backfield for him, a lot of corruption in the backfield. I mean, he was consistent, uh, especially in the second half of the game. Um, probably one of the, the most underrated things that I appreciated in this in this game, which I think that we saw last week, that we didn't see this week is the fact that they didn't go soft on defense when it mattered the most. And I think that that's one of the things that I've really been burning up about the last few weeks because we've seen it across the league where, um, you know, that final two minute, two minute time frame and, uh, you know, the, the offense is definitely going into that two minute drill, two minute offense, and the defense turns around and gives them that soft cover two zone and, you know, they just get picked apart. We didn't see that. Thankfully, <laughs> we didn't see that because we, we came into the last couple of uh, drives that the Saints had uh, with, with some good defensive stops. Uh, on one, we stopped Alvin Kamara uh, on a swing out play to the, to the right uh, for Der Derek Carr. And, you know, we got him tackled with a couple of yards before he, he could make it across the, uh, the first down marker. So that was phenomenal tackling but, tackling, but then they got the ball. They had an opportunity again late in the game, and it was stopped by Steven Nelson uh, uh, interception. But the, the more important part to that was that we didn't just fall back. We didn't give them that 10-yard cushion across the board. We didn't give them that, you know, that inside goal or whatever uh, that, that, you know, we saw what happened with, with the Falcons, man, and they just ate us alive and just, you know, got on down the field, got into the field goal position and did what they needed to do. So it's good to see that the team is uh, learning from their mistakes. Uh, I'm glad to see that D'Amico has the, go the, the guys and the coaches uh, of the right mind frame that they are, um, you know, they're trying to get uh, improvement steady. And, um, you know, the excitement, man, the energy that you saw out there on the field, not only on the field, but in the stands, man, I really wish that I could have been at the game, man. This was one of those that, you know, it was well worth showing up for. I think this game and the Steelers games are probably the two games out of all the games so far that I really wish that I could have been at uh, just for the atmosphere more than anything. Of course, 
you already know how the Texans fans are when it comes to selling the tickets at the stadium, man. They're going to get rid of a lot of those tickets to the opposing team's fans. So, um, you know, to be up there and have an opportunity to talk some, some junk to the, to the opposing team's fans, man, and, and berate them on the way down the stairs. Now, again, no fighting is necessary, but just to kind of give them, you know, the good friendly jabs or whatever on their way out the stadium, man, it's just, ah, man, we need that tone setting, man. And let's, t let's just touch this real quick. We're on about the anniversary of uh, when we let go of Jack Easterby. And just to be honest with you, man, that, that scourge is gone and purged from, <laughs> from the organization. And you can see that we have uh, a, a different manifestation of a team that's out there on the field right now, man. And so it's really dope to see um, whatever underlying tones and decisions and, and creepy, you know, voodoo that was going on with the organization uh pun intended we don't have to deal with that anymore because what we have right now is a super solid organization a super solid team that's on the come up uh we damn sure got to find uh, you know a, a damn fine quarterback uh, uh i just want to you know i want to embrace the fact that this is where we at right now and so sometimes when i talk to friends and, and i talk to family and i talk to you know other fans of other sports you know one of the things that you miss is you you ignore greatness in the moment and I don't want us to ignore this greatness that we're seeing in front of us now. Again, I'm maybe, you know, I'm a fan, so maybe I'm a little bit, you know, uh, hyperbolic when it comes to this. But um, what we're seeing out of C.J. Stroud, what we're seeing in the development and growth of what he's doing so far in six games, man, this is, I mean, it's six games, but you got a little preseason play in there too, man. This is really remarkable what we're seeing. And we really as fans should appreciate this moment in time. Now, if you recall... The last time that the Astros were on this same type of journey, well, in 2017 when the Astros were on this same type of journey, there was a certain sacrifice that was made apparently. <laughs> and we lost our starting quarterback, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson. And, um, you know, it, it was all downhill from there, man. Now, of course, the Astros won last year. We didn't sacrifice anything. Oh, wait, apparently we did <laughs> when we had that terrible season like we did last year. And, you know, with Lovey Smith and everything. So apparently we've been making some sacrifices over the years in compensation for the championship that we won. But, man, listen, to, to be able to be in this position right now, and forgive me, my light is flickering. This is stupid right now. But anyway... To be in a position that we're in right now, man, where we have this team at a 500 spot going into the break, um, we have uh, uh, on the back side of the break, we have the Panthers who, you know, who knows what's happening with them with their situation. Uh, uh, I think that, that Bryce Young is going to actually be back, but how healthy will he be, right? Um, AR-15 is injured, so he's going to be out for the rest of the season, it, appear it appears. And then they're going to lean on Gardner Minshew, which Gardner has a reputation of doing some pretty cool things or whatever. But that doesn't mean that that is going to be sustainable for the rest of the team. That's why he was the backup, right? Um, and then, you know, you got Jacksonville is probably leading leading the pack as far as the, uh, the division is concerned. And that team is still in flux, you know. Uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence has, has dealt with an injury recently. And we've already beat them in a head-to-head, -head, so we got one more, one more matchup with them. Uh, we got two with Tennessee coming at the end of the year, the very end of the year. And then, of course, we got one more with the Colts coming up. Um, man, I mean, we, we stand a chance that we could actually win this division. We're, we're right there in third place right now, but we're not very far separated from the top of the, the, top of the list, man. So being optimistic, optimistic rich. <laughs> um, you know, who knows what could turn off from this thing and we could end up looking at a playoff opportunity. Now, we got a long way to go. So, I don't want to too, jump too far ahead, but, I mean, let's be realistic. We got some teams that are uh, ahead of us that are not great. You know, we've seen how this NFL season plays out. Man, we just saw the Eagles go down and you saw the 49ers go down to the freaking... I mean, you know, it's a great defense. Don't get it, Don't get it twisted, but... You saw them go down to the Cleveland Browns with a backup quarterback. I mean, a backup, backup quarterback even. Um, so it's amazing to see how this season is turning out, man. Uh, it's still very early. We're entering week seven. Got a nice little bye week. 
gives everybody a chance to take a breather especially me as a concrete a content creator who i just do this on the side you know sometimes i need a, i need a little break so i can try to get things together but this gives me a little opportunity to kind of jump ahead and get some things flowing out there man i know that i want to jump back on my weekly recap i haven't done that in a very long time um but i just i be quite honest with you guys i don't have the time like i like i thought that i would starting the season up um but i'll be getting that back in the, in the play uh very very soon man so um Listen, I'm excited about what I saw on the field. I'm sure you are too, man. I want to chop it up with you. Give me your comments in the in the comment section, man. Of course, follow and subscribe. You'll be seeing much more of me over this week and going into next week before we play the Panthers, man. And uh, dropping a bunch of uh, funny bits, man. Check me out on Twitter. Check me out on, or, or X as it's called now. <laughs> check me out on TikTok and check me out on Instagram, man. All under the same name, Texas Fan and Rehab. You know, we we putting out all, all kind of content, man. I'm just trying to get some things going and see, you know, what are you guys like? What are you guys hitting for, man? Give me just all kind of things that you might be interested in, and I'm trying to do it, do my best to try to find it and put the content back out there, man. Talk about it. It doesn't. It's not always going to be text and stuff. Sometimes if I see something in the NFL or if I see something across the league or in any sports medium, um, I'm going to respond to it, man. Just put out there what I what I <laughs> what I like or first thing that I'm thinking about or whatever, but it's mostly going to be Texan centric. So, you know, you guys have seen me. If you follow me, you know what the content is usually about, man. But look forward to seeing a lot more stuff from me soon, man. And until then, Texans fan of rehab, I'm out. Mm -hmm.